Greetings. Welcome to the second episode of Scale Model Workshop. In this episode, we will be looking at various painting and masking techniques, as well as some of the fundamental weathering effects. There will be several subjects that will be used to demonstrate these techniques. Edward's 148 scale MiG-29 will be used to demonstrate some basic undercoat painting principles, with the simplest pre-shading technique being utilised. Then the simple two-tone scheme will be applied, using blue tack as the masking agent. To demonstrate freehand airbrush painting on large-scale planes, and the more advanced pre-shading technique of white shading on a black primer, then one of the methods of applying light dirt and grime onto the airframe. This is a reasonably difficult project, incorporating a Soviet-era multicoloured scheme. Trumpeter's 132 scale MiG-23 MLD is the subject for this method. Tackling some complex paint schemes can be surprisingly easy, and to demonstrate this, Trumpeter's 132 scale Mil 24V Hind will be painted to a Czech Air Force Tiger meat scheme using liquid latex masking. The subject will also be used to demonstrate some techniques for using pigments to recreate engine exhaust. Taking on a bare metal finish project may scare some modelers. We will show that this need not be the case. With some careful preparation, using metalizers can be both simple and rewarding. Trumpeter's 132 scale P47 Thunderbolt will be the subject for that undertaking. The most used and worthwhile investment for a modeler is to have a large selection of good quality masking tapes of various widths. At a minimum, you should get the 1mm tape and a medium width tape. The 1mm tape is very flexible and can be manipulated around curves easily. This allows you to establish the masking boundaries efficiently and with the highest chance of accuracy. With patience and some adjustment, you can achieve the perfect boundary lines. Once the demarcation line has been created with the thin tape, simply mask off the surrounding area with larger widths of tape. For this purpose, use a light tape with minimal adhesiveness. There is nothing worse than failing to adequately mask off an area that is not in the immediate spraying area, only to discover some unforeseen overspray. Masking canopies can at times be quite tricky when using ordinary tape. The depth and crispness of the canopy frame moulding will determine how easy it is to cut the tape into shape. An effective and easy alternative to tape is to use chrome metal foil. Simply cut out a slightly oversized piece for the canopy section. Then rub it onto the plastic using the self-adhesive backing. With a fresh blade, simply trace along the grooves surrounding the window frame applying almost no pressure. The thinness of the foil is the key to this technique. Simply remove any excess foil with a pair of tweezers. There are two main styles of undercoat that can be used in modelling, 
and can be applied with an airbrush or with a can. The first style is either a grey or white base, with the subsequent pre-shading done using black. This is the traditional method used by the majority of modellers and creates a slightly brighter result with the various camouflage colours on top. This method is recommended for projects where the desire is to have a finish that is closer to the original factory build. It is recommended to use this colour choice when using thin acrylic paints, especially when using some weak colours such as yellow or red. Simply spray the model with even coats, making sure the whole surface is covered. Using this colour choice of undercoat makes the process of pre-shading quite quick and simple. Simply paint black lines along all the panel lines. It is not necessary to be too precise as it will all be covered by the subsequent base colour coats. Ideally, you'd want to go about 2 or 3 millimetres on either side of the main panel lines and thinner on the minor ones. This is of course dependent on the scale and subject and on how weathered you wish the final outcome to be applying thinner lines for smaller subjects or for a cleaner finish. Keep in mind though that this stage is only the beginning of a series of weathering effects which may be applied and the end result is rather subtle. It is generally better to go over an area multiple times with thin coats rather than with one or two heavier lines. It is recommended to add a little extra tonal variation by randomly applying patches of black in the centre of the panels with short bursts. This will create a more weathered look. When painting the main colours on top of this method, a great deal more care and work is required to blend everything together nicely. In my experience, with this method it is more challenging to maintain a consistent weathered look over the whole subject.
As usual, always spray the lightest colour first. Then get some blue tack and roll it out into one long snake, ensuring that it is not too thick and is consistent throughout its length. Simply attach the snake to the model following the required outline of the colour scheme. Once this is done, gently push down and flatten it out slightly. It is worthwhile to mask off anything behind the blue tack with masking tape. If you do not do this, as is shown, you may run the risk of overspray. Now simply follow the contours of the scheme with your airbrush, ensuring that you maintain a consistent angle of approach. The best angle is usually directly above, which was difficult to maintain on camera due to the setup and limited manoeuvrability of the subject. Once the paintwork is finished, simply remove the blue tack to reveal the finished scheme beneath. One thing worth mentioning is that this method should be done, if possible, within a few days from start to finish. This is because if the blue tack is left on the model over an extended period of time, especially over several weeks, you run the risk that oils may leach from the blue tack onto the paintwork. The second option is to use a black undercoat, preferably gloss, with the pre-shading subsequently done using white. Depending on how heavily the white pre-shading is applied, or if any pre-shading is used at all, this method has a tendency to darken the overall finish and is great when wishing to create a model of a subject that has been in service for some time and seen reasonable wear and tear. This effect can be enhanced or reduced by the number of base colour coats applied. The undercoat is sprayed using the same methods as with the white one, ensuring that the whole surface is sufficiently covered. In my experience, Alclad 2 Gloss Black Base is one of the best undercoats available, due to its extremely thin consistency and subsequent overall outcome. I would recommend doing at least two, possibly three coats, ensuring that when it's dry, the surface is completely black and has a high gloss sheen to it. The pre-shading elements of this method are very different however and is quite laborious. It is necessary to colour in every individual panel, whether large or small, with gloss white paint. It is recommended that enamel paint be used in this process and to use a thinner than normal mixture, 60-40 or even a 70-30 paint to thinner. By applying multiple coats it is much easier to control the white coverage of each panel and therefore the degree of overall weathering. As with the previous pre-shading, the end result is still subtle, however it's more pronounced in comparison. When you spray larger panels, add a little random variety in the intensity in different parts, that is to say, Make a few areas of the panel brighter by intensifying the white coverage.
When applying a single colour, such as on the underside of this MiG-23, the colour is sprayed with a very thin mixture evenly across the whole surface, preferably with a 0.5mm nozzle airbrush. Try not to favour any one area and let the paint build up gradually. The majority of the total effect has already been achieved by the pre-shading and the colour coat needs to simply sit on top. One of the best ways to apply a multicoloured camouflage pattern on large scale planes is to apply the camouflage scheme freehand. This is my favourite method of painting, mainly because you can see the gradual progress and the model come to life without anything hidden under masking tape. Starting with the lightest colour first, create an outline of the patch or segment and then gradually fill in the colour. It is important to note that you should not use any aids such as a pencil or other form of marking as this will leave visible textures or marks on the completed paintwork. Make sure that you have the painting scheme instructions next to you and use specific panels and points on the plane as guides when forming the outline. When applying the subsequent coats, it's best to use a thin mixture of paint sprayed at a low pressure, approximately 15 psi, and try to hold the airbrush as close to the model as possible without the paint pooling. This is where the trigger restricting mechanism on airbrushes comes in handy, as you can set it to allow only minimal amounts of paint to be allowed through the airbrush. Thank you. 
be aware that you may get some splatter on other colours. This is more visible when darker colours are applied adjacent to very light ones. If this occurs, there are two things which can be done. Try thinning the mixture even further and hold the airbrush closer whilst depressing the trigger less, thus restricting the airflow further. Alternatively, you can attempt to correct the overspray by respraying the other colours. Prevention, however, is always better than the cure and saves time. That's all for this episode of Scale Model Cinema. I hope you enjoyed it and will join us again in the future. Check out other videos at scalemodelcinema.com or like us on Facebook. Cheers. <laughs>